Now with this facility here, we could in five years time become an 18, 20 million pound turnover company. Right folks, we are in a completely opposite end of the, the country this week. We are right all the way down in Southampton and uh, we have come to K2 Trailers site in Southampton and we are very lucky to be joined um, by Terry who is the founder and owner of K2 and uh, then Robbie, who basically sort of runs it. <laughs> I think that's, that's that fair that. enough. Yeah. So, Terry, I'm going to go straight to you. Give us a little bit of the, the history of the K2 uh, business. Uh, started at Sperry New Holland in Aylesbury from 18 when I did an apprenticeship and went through the design office, ended up to um, as field test manager for the whole of the New Holland Group. Um, from there I went into the Grasshopper mowing machine with Agrimac Engineering, which you probably all know about. Yeah. Um, and having got sacked from there, we set up K2. <laughs> Hold on a wee minute now. <laughs> <laughs> so your history before K2 was um, Ultimately, you're a designer, you're an engineer. Yeah. What was your first design at K2? First design at K2 was a twin drum, eight foot mowing machine with a conditioner and an auto swather on the back, which we <laughs> manufactured back in the early 90s and shipped probably 30, 40 into Southern Ireland at that time. Performed very well, one of the best on the market, but then People started price cutting and everything else, and we couldn't survive. And that led you then to what products? We started looking at muck spreaders, and in our days at Agrimac Engineering, we developed a muck spreader for econ engineering, if you ever did, up in Yorkshire. And then we found that was going on the market, so we purchased the rights to manufacture that, which was an old trailer type muck spreader with horizontal beaters that just threw it out the back, um, which got us into Much Brothers. And we made our first vertical beater machine, probably 19, 1990, 92. And from there, we've grown the business to be known. And the Much Brother came before the trailers? Oh, Much Brother came a long time before the trailers, yeah. You really are putting a drive on. With, with, with the trailers and, and the reason I'm coming to that and the, I suppose one of the reasons we actually got chatting was based on um, a video we made with um, Apsley Farms because we yeah. were looking at the the very latest and greatest yeah. trailer product that you have brought to the market. I'm assuming you've been very much involved in that so tell us a little bit about where you're at with trailers now Robbie. Yeah so about four or five years ago we uh, developed the compact and push trailer um, onto the UK market, there's some European ones out there, um, but we saw an opening in the market. Um, and the main advantage of that is the compaction up to 40% more material in, in the trailer itself. K2 as a site up in Haddenham, um, we were at 100% capacity, so we had no more space to produce any more trailers. And we were obviously doing the tipping, the flats, the dump trailers, um, but we wanted to progress what we you know, thought was right for the market. Yeah. And 
that's where we came to with the compact and push trailers. Hence, we're now sitting down at our second factory down down near Southampton, which myself and Terry came down here 12 months ago, was it? Yeah, it is. First week of February, yeah, just 9, over, 2019. Just over 12 months ago to get mm. some... Uh, it's funny the boss man always remembers the day he makes a big decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but, was a big decision as yeah. well, yeah. But this was a, a, a trailer production facility, yeah. formerly Warwick Trailers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In your own words, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> we, we came down here with the view to asking Warwick Trailers to make us some flat, 50 flatbed trailers. And halfway up the stairs, I turned to Robbie and said, I want this place. Anyhow, halfway through the, um, we went through them producing us 50 trailers and we looked around the workshop, halfway around the workshop. I said to the main man, I'm jealous of your premises, I'd love to buy it. And he said, it's for sale, you know. And that's how it's all come about. Wow. With this facility on board, you have to push it. You have <laughs> yeah, to be successful have to because, <laughs> yeah. because to t Terry, the bottom line here is you have some significant investment already made here. We only have to look at the, the state of the art blast and and paint facility that, that that you have set up. I mean, it's. I don't think I've ever seen one as new or as fresh because it's only it's only really been installed. But you're blasting you're you're blasting with a steel shot. You have a, you're very particular about your finish. Terry, can you explain a little bit about the, the quality behind the K2 paint and the blast? Well, we've always prided ourselves in that um, we produce a good paint job, and the only way to do that basically is to shot blast and use two pack paint. When we took this factory over, he didn't have that facility here. So obviously we had to put that in. Um, didn't want to spend the money, but we couldn't produce a K2 product without it. So it took us probably four or five months to yeah, get that least, in. Yeah. We fully got it running, I expect really the first of this month, yeah. probably fully running. Mm -hmm. And now we're producing the K2 trailer out of here with I think some very, very surprisingly good looks. Absolutely. and. Your blast as well. It's a it's a it's a steel shot you use, but you, you give it a good hammer now. Let's oh, it's, just, mm -hmm. it's very hard hammered. Yes, you and use you a twelve and a half grit, and it's put on at one hundred and ten psi. You like the the first two pack primer hitting that. You have to put a decent level of paint on. We try and get to one hundred and thirty microns, which is a very thick paint finish. When you compare that, your car's probably only got eight microns on it. <laughs> So, but we need to do that to cover up the, the little pits in the material. It's the way we like to do it and, there was, and we're known for our paint quality. So we won't back off of that any time. And you have a, a very nice system down there that you can automatically switch over different colours? Yeah, so we can choose between uh, 13 different colours, just a flick of a switch. Um, we can change additional colours on top of that, but 13 straight off. The Oxford site um, is basically our engineering hub, so plasma, laser, two brake presses, two CNC machines, we've got robots there as well. Um, so that produces all our raw materials for the second factory, but also for the, for the home factory as well. Um, so at Oxford we produce all the spreaders and all our compact and push trailers, and then down at Southampton we produce all tipping, flat, any other range of trailers. And is the rolling road something that um like I said, do you see it as part of a health and safety drive or is it just you want to make sure the brakes are efficient? Or so efficient? any trailer leaving this site here with air brakes will be put over the rolling road. We know that, that, that it will get a certificate with that trailer, so we know it left our factory with uh, efficient braking efficiencies. We can retest as well. If locals want to bring trailers in, we're happy to do test trailers and adjust brakes accordingly. Yeah. But, you know, for peace of mind, all our tipping trailers out of the Southampton depot can go out with a brake certificate. One of the things that we will notice here, and I mean the camera has been out and about, um, there are still Warwick trailers being uh, produced here. Is that something that you have you've took on board and you're still fulfilling orders? We're continuing to produce the Warwick trailer and we always will because it gives us a broader band of trailers to market. We can now produce from anything from a two tonne trailer up to a 25 tonne, 30 tonne trailer. Probably the only manufacturer in the country that can do that vast range of trailers. Along with the Mux Brothers, we can be the only person in the UK doing that. The, the Warwick trailer itself, you know, they've been going over 60 years. It, it has a brand, it has a name, and it has a huge market, especially in the South. 
in that scenario where K2 didn't have a market. So off the back of that, we've brought on other dealers who would, who have sold Warwicks, who now do K2s, and vice versa. You know, there's a there's a range of products that K2 didn't do that we can now substitute in with the Warwick. So it was very complementary to K2 as a business, and to all of a sudden walking into a factory with an order book, a production facility. You know, we had welders, we had office staff. So all of a sudden, we became a running factory within you know, a day of taking it over really, wasn't yeah. it? So, yeah. you know, it, very, it was very complimentary and it made the purchase very easy. It was in and a big hit. Your compact and push trailer, just going back to, to, to Apsley, how exactly does that trailer work? What's the benefits? Why would I invest the extra money into buying that trailer or why would I want to have that trailer? So there's, there's a few reasons. Um, fr from a efficiency point of view you can get 40% more in the trailer meaning if you have 10 tracks and trailers you can reduce that down to six tracks and trailers now generally in most products we'll get up to 40% that may vary depending on the time of the season or the product you're putting in it grass or maize it will very much vary it's much more efficient and there's also the, the safety um, around tipping yeah. so putting a big 18 20 ton tipping trailer up in the air can be very dangerous um, tipping on uneven grounds um, but also speed of getting away from the pit. With a tipping trailer, you kind of have to wait for that trailer to drop back down before you drive off, whereas a push trailer, once it's pushed out the back, you can re retract your, your ram while you're driving along. So from a speed perspective, you can be quicker as well. Is it difficult to operate? Like when you're, when you're driving along, do you just push a button and it, what way does it You're around? working on the spools, so you do have to work a little bit with the forage driver. Um, and yeah, there's a little bit of skill. I mean, everybody watching this here is all got skill, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but there, is, there is a little bit more work, but ultimately yeah. it's a big ram pushing bike. Yeah. And if you've got one guy that can't do it, then he doesn't have to do it. It's not, it's not the be all and end all, it's still a trailer and it's safer. You have a few lovely trailers uh, going through this particular factory at the minute. I do believe they're curved 16 ton trailers yep. painted in John Deere green, uh, yeah. green. Very high spec trailer. We were just we were just studying this up yep. earlier on. Steering axles on the yep. ones that, that we've seen. You do something a wee bit different from what I've seen before. Now, I do believe this is uh, on you now, Terry, going back. You don't build a, a chassis and then paint it, blast it then, put a body on it and go back again and paint and blast So you build your body, you build your chassis, you paint them and then you put them together in the finishing bay. Am I r correct in saying that's not really how I've seen it before going about? Is that Most trailer manufacturers make them together. But from our point of view, everything's done on jigs. They fit, they go together, and it's so much easier to blast a chassis and paint it properly, mm -hmm. blast a trailer and paint it properly, or a body and paint it properly. And then the fitting's easier because you're not crawling under bodies and everything else. And so to us, it makes sense. And that's the way we've always made our trailers. In looking round one of your chassis that is going to accept a 16 ton curve, we noticed the, the chassis you have it stepped. We, we've always stepped our chassis when we put a steering axle on and they've all got steering axles on. It means we can get a full 20 degree turning angle as against a lot of competition which are only about six. We also get stability in the chassis as well because we keep our front part of our chassis wider that uh, we keep our stability. I do like the the concept of your you know there is a health and safety side to it whilst I, un I do get it and I do understand there hasn't been too too many um, incidents over the years but you know when you're using hydraulics and you're tipping rams up high there's always risk and there's always that, you know, stability, potential issue. So your compact and push trailer, that's something you are really passionate about and really want to take forward. Yeah, I mean, and it's not just for silage. You know, we, they are grain tight. We have guys using them on grain. We build them with lower sides. Compost is a very, very big, uh, they use them a lot. Um, wood chips um, becoming massive, tipping into lower sheds. You know, these big trailers are getting huge now and sheds aren't getting any newer. Um, so actually getting these trailers up in the sheds doesn't help. So there's lots of things that really do help. Muck, um, putting muck into a field, they can put loads on top of loads because they haven't got a tip and it'll push it out the back. So from that point of view, there are a lot of advantages. It's not just the fact that it's a compactor and that it doesn't tip. All hydraulic back doors, all your trailers hydraulic back doors? Yeah, we don't use any manual back doors now. 
everything goes out the side driving doors. That's non-negotiable. <laughs> it's just what you do. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just what we've always brought ourselves up with, believing is right or yeah. the best. Where is K2 going in the future? Five years from now, what's going to happen? What's going to change? Well, at present, we're the only manufacturer that can build a full range of trailers with a compactor trailer and a spreader that no one else in the market can offer. What are we heading for? Market domination? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, want to, we want to be one of the biggest manufacturers in the UK of trailers and spreaders to start with. Do you sell many around the world or is it all UK and Ireland based? No, New Zealand's quite a big market for us. Um, we probably do 15, 20 spreaders a year into New Zealand. Um, Australia take a few, I wouldn't say it's a huge market, um, but there's a lot of opportunity for Australia, Canada, America, South Africa. Norway take maybe between five and ten a year, um, but again, those countries, there's huge potential for us to grow up into. Um, again, we've never pushed it because we never had the capacity, but now our doors have opened, we've got this capacity, we'll be able to go out and do some more. So with regards to K2, it's very much watch this space. And I have noticed there has been a little bit of rebranding and a little bit more of a, an approach to uh, getting your name out there. Because I suppose maybe you've been partly an author of your own success over the last mm -hmm. few years where you naturally got all that you could you yeah. could manage with. So now yeah. there's this new desire to rebrand and push out there. Is that, or am I dreaming or am I am I correct no, in saying no, I that? I think you're very correct, yeah. <laughs> we haven't really had to sell for the last three or four years because we haven't got the capacity. And now with this facility here, we could, in five years' time, become an 18, 20 million pound turnover company, which is quite big in the UK. There's not many above that. You know, so that's where we're aiming for. That's where we'd like to go. How does it feel, Terry, to go from stressful driving, <laughs> starting a business, having to sell, 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 to having to actually pull back and almost not sell, to now you must feel like it's the start again. <laughs> if you understand yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. does it feel yeah. like that? It does feel like that. Yeah, it's sort of revitalised me, I think, because we were going nowhere at one stage until we bought this factory. And now suddenly, in the last six months, we've had some very good young people come into the business, sort of probably six under 30, and it's just sort of revitalized the place. And with Robbie now <laughs> driving it forward, we should go forward very so quickly. What you're, so what you're really saying is, Robbie, <laughs> you've got five years to get this company to 18 to 20 million yeah. turnover or else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing like a yeah. bit of pressure. <laughs>